thank you for coming to the first tutorial of Magic Cat. And uh, we're going to go over installing Linux, uh, which I'm going to do here with a virtual box. I'm going to do a little virtual machine on, on my Linux system, a little Linux laptop. And uh, we're going to create a new one. So let's type a name for it. We're going to use uh, Parrot Security probably here, I think. Let's see, I have some downloaded ISOs. Go to that folder. Yeah, I've got Parrot. I mean, I have some others, Ghost and, and Kali even, but uh, I'm thinking I'm going to stick with Parrot because uh, I really kind of want to do a, a series of tutorials on Parrot Linux specifically also because there aren't many out there and it's a really good pen testing operating system. So we put the name in here, ParrotSec, and choose what type of operating system. This could be Linux, of course. And now we have just the mainstays here. We could go with other 64-bit, but you know what? This is a Debian distribution, so let's go with Debian 64-bit. And that should work fine. We need to increase the, uh, the memory here a bit. I try to get as much memory as I can afford on the computer, guys. You don't want to go into the red. You know, stay a little ways away from the red. You don't want to completely struggle, but give it as much additional memory as you can here. Okay, so we want to create this virtual disk right now on the drive here. I have this selected. And this is not meant to be a tutorial on setting up a virtual machine, but since we're having to do it anyway, just easier to have a, a VM. Now we're going to increase the hard drive space. We need more hard drive. Let's put um, let's put 80 gigs. That's a nice round number. Let's see how close we can get in there. Might just type it in. Yeah, be easier. But um, we probably won't use all 80 gigs. This, like I said, this is for test and for some tutorials. Now I'm going to be going through for you guys. And uh, we want it dynamic. I want it dynamically allocated because that just means that if it needs to grow beyond 80 gigs, it's allowed to do that. It will get larger on its own. Now we need to set up some settings for this virtual computer that we're creating. Because that's what this does. It, it creates a virtual computer so that we can install this operating system to it. And we go through each part here. Now I like to set bi-directional on the clipboard and for drag and drop so you can move things back and forth between the guest and host computer. This is all good. This is all stuff you want active. Don't really need a floppy drive, but you know. And kudos for those of you that know what a floppy drive is still because uh, you don't really get them on computers anymore. You can actually still buy the external. Now this is, we're definitely going to pump this up. We need video we need video memory, so I just drive that sucker up. I mean, don't make your machine struggle, but you know, it's give it as much as you can. All this is good as is. Everything else here is good. Storage, we're going to come back to this because um, that's going to be the last thing we do. This is good. Everything here is good. NAT, so we got internet. Uh, don't need any ports. USB 2 is good. Usually the default there is fine. We're going to add a shared folder from the host machine to the guest here. And say choose other. Let me just pick the folder and you know what? I'm thinking we're just going to use my home folder here because then we'll have access to all that stuff from inside the test drive. Let's do that. May need to grab some stuff there for the tutorials. So we want it to auto mount so we don't have to manually mount it each time. And this is all pretty standard or however you want to set it. Now storage, you see we have it picks up the, the natural or physical drive on my laptop, which is fine. And you can add all kinds of different drives, you know, partitions turned into a virtual drive. But we're going to add another DVD drive and we're going to choose an image to put in it. So this is the equivalent of you taking your Parrot Security disk, you burn that ISO onto a DVD, so you got the DVD disk, and see we're grabbing the image, 
and we're putting it there. So now it thinks it has a disk and a DVD drive of its computer. Uh, say it's all virtual, so that's how we insert the disk on VirtualBox. That stumps a lot of people. They can't figure out how to do that part, but that's how you do it. It's very simple. Now you put the disk in your drive after you get everything set up on your computer. You put the disk in. Make sure you set the boot sequence so that it boots from the DVD drive first. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, um, look it up. Uh, it's in your BIOS. It's real easy. You won't hurt anything. Look it up for your particular name brand computer. But you put your disk in. Make sure the boot sequence boots on the DVD first. Then you shut your computer down completely. And wait about 10 seconds and uh, then start it back up. And that's what we're going to simulate here with our virtual box. We're going to simulate starting the computer up with the disk and the drive. Okay, here we go. And it takes just a minute. We're sucking up some memory here right now. So here we go. Didn't quite click it. I thought I did. All right, so here's our disk immediately booted in the parrot and we want to bypass all this you notice you can use it as a live install you can just run it from the disk and oh that won't enlarge like we want it to that's okay we probably need the guest tools put in first we'll do that later so we're going to go down to install and hit enter on your keyboard and i usually stick with standard installer because without all the graphics goodies it's just a lot quicker yeah, so we're going to do that, especially since we're installing to a virtual machine, because um, this is, like I said, it's going to strain a little bit for resources on this laptop. This is not a, a big beefy gamer's laptop. It's a um, it's a decent laptop, but it's not super beefy. So here we go. Everything's going to be pretty much auto select. Enter, 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 and zip, zip. Here we go. We're off and running. Okay, so this is going, this is putting in like the live files right now, installing what it absolutely needs to, like the command center to run. And that is what's going to install the operating system. And here we go. But yeah, I'm going to be running a, a series of these tutorials. What I'm going to do is, um, this is the first. Um, so the first thing we're doing is we're installing our Linux system. And then we're going to go through a series of um, oh, and tweaking it and installing different little goodies that you need to trick out your Linux box. We well, don't need to, but it's nice to. Some of them I definitely say need because they're, they're handy tools. But a lot of stuff's just useless fun things to do to make your box look cool, you know and uh, operate the way you want it to. I'm um, real big on things being useful and efficient, uh, quicker and easier to better. Um, but I got to give shout outs to uh, my brother from another mother. Um, hey Rick, how's it going? <laughs> uh, Rick is the inspiration for this series of tutorials. Um, we were discussing the channel and all as I was developing it. Uh, so you can thank him for these because um, he said, hey man, you know, I, I want to get into this, but I need to install, um, you need to help me install this Linux first. And I thought, you know what, that'd be a good thing to do. Let me go through those. Now you see it's asking me to put in a username here, and I'm doing that. I'm just going to use Test Dummy because this is a test system. And select what we need to here. All this is pretty much common sense. Just make sure the right thing's selected before you choose it. Now, for those of you that have used Linux in the past, and that may have seemed odd to you. I only put in one username. Okay, let's see. Notice what I'm choosing here. We don't. We want to do everything as automatic as possible. We don't want to manually configure anything. Yes, use the entire drive. And automatically partition. And yes, we want you to go ahead and do this and see what it did here. It's trying to fool us. It started on the wrong one, so you got to make sure. That's why I said pay attention to what you're clicking on. But as you notice, so far it's just yes, 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 yes. Enter, 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 enter. Nothing difficult, nothing complicated. It does it all manually for you. 
if you've used FreeBSD or Linux or Solaris in the past, or IRIX, you know that you in the old days you had to set up your partitions manually and the file systems and all. It, it was a pain. It really was. You needed to know a lot more about your hard drive and setting up partitions, which is not a bad thing to know. I'm not saying you don't need to know that. Well, you don't need to anymore, but it's a good thing to know. So maybe you want to research it a little in your spare time. But those of you who have, you remember that in the old days you did that. And you also remembered, you may have noticed, you said, hey, he only put in one user. What happened to root? Well, uh, Parrot particularly, and this was new to me too at first, um, and apparently Debian releases, at least several of them, they're going to this new system now. Um, for those of you who don't know, you normally would create your root user, and root is basically God on your computer. Okay, Root can do anything. You can tell root, or root can say, delete my entire hard drive and it will go away okay so we don't want to do that <laughs> but um, it can happen it can happen um, I'm just gonna kinda skip through some some of the dragged out stuff here so huh, magically it's moved way ahead now but anyway in the old system you create a root user and then you created a normal user and the rule of thumb is you always use the normal user. You never ever go to root unless you absolutely have to. You sudo to root, S-U-D-O, which means super user do. But you don't normally work from root. So now they have a system where you still have root, but the user portion is kind of eliminated. It's the best way I can put it. So root's still in the system. It's just not an actual user that you can switch to. Um, but you can still in terminal for those of you wondering and we will we'll get around to that um, in the additional uh, tutorials we will be going over many many things in the terminal so that you all become more comfortable with the terminal and, uh, it's not foreign to you so all right well this is going to take a while so I think that we're going to speed ahead on this portion also so let's do that okay so here we go um we should be there we go amazing how we can jump through time like that isn't it but uh, here we go here's test dummy so we're going to put in test dummy's password and we put something real easy in for test dummy because he's a dummy, right? So his password is let me in one two three. So put it. Alright, now you want to run your updates. You see period updaters popped up already. Even though it's a brand new distro, they're gonna have some patches and stuff here and there. Like any software. And that's some kind of modern esque new wallpaper they have in this version <coughs> the parrot there in the background we're going to go over tweaking the Linux system and everything in future tutorials uh, now that we have our system installed um, next we will probably go through oh goodness I don't know maybe uh, setting up a, a cool terminal we'll see about doing that next time so Here's your, your Let's Install Linux tutorial. Rick, hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope everyone learned something. You see it's very easy to do. It's not, not something that's very difficult at all. Um, and uh, I'm going to run the updates here. So that's already done next time we come on. You may need to set a couple of things you see for the first time. Like this is on Spanish. And uh, whoops, I'm going to put in uh, the user's password which of course remember is what let me in one two three type that in there here we go now all right and now 
So it's going to install updates, which means in a minute now we're probably going to have this gigantic terminal window just pop up and cover up everything uh, because that's where it's going to run the updates. Well, in the meantime, let's go back to the keyboard. To, oh, okay. Ah, oh, now here comes the giant terminal window. So we say yes. That need, one package needs updating. Okay, we'll give you permission again by once again putting in the administrator's password, which is what, folks? Let me in. One, two, three. Okay, hit enter, and yep, okay, progress, very good. Now you're going to let me get to the keep, go up, no, there's the big giant terminal that's going to come up over everything, that's wonderful. Okay, but it's going to go pretty quick because it's in a terminal. However, we are still going to probably skip past this part because we just don't want to waste time. Well, we'll go back in the meantime and get that keyboard here we go let's see blah 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 progress I think she's kind of stuck I wonder if we can nudge it uh, we can't remove this because this thing is garbage take this off the panel there doesn't really do anything useful and wait a minute for that to disappear because it's really eating into the uh, there we go into the memory and let's see, come on progress. Will you let me view full screen yet? Well, I think, uh, hmm, it's not going to let us go full screen. I think we definitely need to install the guest tools before it does all that. See the little guest additions. It would normally install this automatically from that click, but we're going to have to do it manually, I believe. Now we've got internet. It's got a virtual wired connection. We could set up a VPN if you wanted to instead of just doing a NAT connection for internet. Do a VPN tunnel from your guest to your host and it's a little bit more secure. If you'd like to do your pen testing and hacking and goodies from a virtual machine to make it more secure because you think it's more secure it would truly be as long as you're using like a VPN we can really mask everything okay so our updates are complete and there we go